It is misunderstood, underappreciated, reviled, ignored. Yet, it is one of the most important pieces of equipment the freediver will ever use. Ready to know everything you need to know about the snorkel? Let's roll! Ah, the snorkel. What an amazing invention. Its inventor, Count Spiro von Snorkelius, is also credited with inventing boiled broccoli, bell-bottom pans. Ah, never mind that. I don't even know who that guy is, and certainly we do not know who invented the snorkel. But we do know that as far back as 350 BC, that is 2,370 years ago, the Greek philosopher Aristotle, yeah, that's him, mentioned in his book, Parts of Animals, that to aid them in their diving, divers used a device similar to the trunk of an elephant. <sighs> okay, it has been with us for centuries, and it doesn't really matter who invented it, where, or when. But the truth is, the mouth goes here, air comes in and out of there. What else is there really for us to know? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot. You see, there are several design features in a snorkel, the combination of which can make its use either a very pleasurable experience, or it can start ranging from uncomfortable to really unpleasant to downright dangerous. And there is one flaw of the design in particular that can actually be fatal. Yes, fatal. So pay attention. So let us tackle the features of the snorkel. Number one, stiffness and material. Well, a stiff tube attached to the side of the head is actually an accident or a disaster waiting to happen. Why? Very simply put, doesn't matter how careful we are, the snorkel tip right here at some point or another will get tangled up or caught in something around us. It can be on the surface, somebody swimming close to us. It can be one of the surface floats that many snorkelers use. It can be our own arms when we're trying to swim. Uh, while we're underwater, it can be a descent line that we use to descend or ascend when we're diving. Underwater, at the bottom, it can be a structure that we come too close to, such as a wreck or a coral reef. Yes, you should never come that close to underwater structures, but it is quite possible for the tip of the snorkel that protrudes over our head to get caught somewhere. The snorkel will pull on the mask, the seal of the mask will break, water will rush in, and then usually the diver will tend to choke, inhale that water and choke underwater. And did you know that about 88% of all incidents that happen underwater that lead to accidents are the result of a flooded mask? And probably about half of those incidents have been caused by this pesky contraction right here. So how can we remedy this issue with the snorkel? Well, it's quite simple. With this snorkel right here, you can see, and do not mind the appearance, please. This is a snorkel that has been used hundreds or thousands of times. And after real use, they all tend to start looking this way. If you look at this snorkel right here, you will see that it has, it is made of actually two different materials. The top part is much softer than the middle part. Now the middle part will not collapse when we're using it. It will not kind of flex into itself, but the top can do that quite easily. So if we are using this snorkel and it gets caught on something, it will flex, it will give, and it will become detached from whatever it is tangled on without detaching the mask from our face. Feature number two. Ah, the all too important mouthpiece. Think about it. This thing is going to be in your mouth sometimes for hours at a time. So it stands to reason that it should be as comfortable as can be. But it goes beyond that as well. Now. This right here is a typical snorkel design that has remained unchanged probably for the past 50 or 60 years. Materials have become softer, more hypoallergenic, 
But other than that, this design has remained unchanged for a very, very long time. And part of that design is this mouthpiece right here, which has a very wide entry into the mouth with very separated bite taps. What happens with a design like this is that when it goes into the mouth, it tends to make us open our jaws in an expanded sideways shape that very quickly leads to jaw fatigue and pain. Notice how hard I jaw muscles are right here. I have to light hard on this off east and my muscles become stiff right away. Not good. Another feature that comes with this design is that it sort of forces us to open our mouth in this sort of position, which is really counterproductive to a proper breathing pattern. Now, the, 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 the proper breathing pattern happens when we can make a circle with our lips in our mouth. <sighs> that is a way in which we can move or flow more air in and out of our airway. So what is the right mouthpiece? Well, on this design right here, we see that we have a mouthpiece that is much rounder, a little smaller, not as wide. It has bigger bite tabs that are nonetheless softer so that once they get inserted between our teeth, they tend to stay there on their own without forcing us to clamp down on them. That makes it a very comfortable thing to use the snorkel like that. In addition, this mouthpiece even rotates, something that makes it very useful because it allows us to move the snorkel as we put our faces in the water. It allows us to change the tip of the snorkel to different parts of the head. So we want a mouthpiece that is comfortable, that promotes a proper breathing pattern, and that allows us to customize the position of the snorkel. Now, number three. Attachment point or attachment method. Ah, to clip or to talk. What do I mean by that? Well, simply put, the snorkel has to attach to the mask somewhere. That usually is done by means of this clip right here and the mask strap goes right through it. The problem with that particular method is that the snorkel becomes somewhat loose on the side of the mask. And when we are swimming, when we are diving underwater, especially when we are ascending, moving hard against the water column, the snorkel that is clipped like this will tend to do this on the side of the head. It will flutter in against the incoming rush of water. And this actually may happen hard enough that once again, the snorkel may tend to detach the mask from our faces and propitiate the flooding that we do not want. So what is the solution to that? Well, the simplest solution would be to tuck the snorkel underneath the mask. Now, in this particular case, allow me to show you how I wear this particular snorkel with my mask. Right here, this snorkel will go around right there. Now, notice that to make that happen, this snorkel actually has a flat inner surface. This surface being flat helps it to adjust to the contours of our face in a very comfortable manner, whereas a snorkel that is round, if pushed against the face, will actually be painful most of the time. Another shortcoming of this particular design with the clip right here is that for divers that have hair probably just a tad longer than mine, which is most female divers and a lot of guys, this clip and the snorkel and the mask strap will all combine to achieve one evil goal, which is to get tangled up in your hair. Don't believe me? Try it. Go out there with your beautiful long flowing hair, clip the snorkel to your mask, and when you come back, you can share your misery at hashtag snorkel ate my hair, hashtag snorkel still tangle in my hair two weeks later, hashtag there is a plastic monster living in my head. Number four, shape and design. A straight snorkel is not good because although it may keep the blowhole, yes, it's called a blowhole like whales and dolphins, the blowhole high above the surface, as soon as you start tilting your head to look around, especially in the same direction as the snorkel, this tip 
will dip in the water and you'll get a nice slurp of salty water in your lungs. To prevent that from happening or greatly decrease the possibility of it happening, we have snorkel nowadays, like this one that you've seen already, that have a curve design. This curvy design puts the blowhole right high above our heads, but actually puts it in a bent position so that when we do this, there is a very prob high probability that we are not gonna dip the tip of the snorkel in the water. So, in conclusion, what is the best type of snorkel, really, to make this activity as enjoyable, safe, and high performance as possible? Well, like we said, something like this would fit the bill just right. We want a tip that is flexible enough not to get caught in anything. We want a surface that is conducive to tucking the snorkel under the mask strap rather than clipping it to it with a flat surface. We want a mouthpiece that promotes a circular position of our lips and our mouth for optimal breathing patterns that is comfortable to keep in our mouth with comfortable bike taps that is rotating and a material that will not deflect under its own weight with a curved design to keep it from dipping in the water when we move our head sideways. Uh, let me show you one that I've been using for the past few years. Mm, right here, check this out. This is a snorkel that I customized by cutting it even shorter than it actually was, okay? It has a mouthpiece that is slightly bigger than the one I show you, but with excellent bite taps, and the snorkel is extremely flexible. The way I use the snorkel myself in particular, I have it in my mouth. When I take that last breath, I take this little snorkel like this, I can bend so easily, and either in this position or in this position, I bend it in my hand and I stash it inside my weight belt. I slide it right under my weight belt where it will remain for the duration of my dive. I don't have to bother, I don't have to worry about the snorkel being loose, flapping around, it's safely tucked under my weight belt, and when I come back to the surface, I pull it out, then I slide it under my mask strap again, and it is there to help me breathe. So that was the snorkel. I am Rudy Castineda for LearnFreeDiving.com. Please be safe underwater.